G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for 2023. I uh, hope everyone's had a good summer. Uh, it's been actually a relatively mild summer here in Perth. It's been good to have a couple of months off, uh, making making videos, feeling a bit more refreshed. I've uh, been getting into the gym, all the typical sort of stuff that uh, you would get up to over the summer. It's been a fairly uneventful one, um, other than the fact that one of the co-founders of True Footy, Joycey, has had a baby girl as well. So I'm gonna go down this weekend and meet her. Um, so yeah, exciting times going down with Busher. Um, and uh, from from this point, I guess it kind of marks the, not the start of the season, but uh, certainly probably the start of when I'm gonna be making content throughout the year, obviously. Pre-season games are not too far away. I think uh, some got announced uh, for mid-February as well. So it's all starting to heat up now. And it's very, very exciting. It has been mentally uh, a little trickier to get back into the process of writing a video and then making one. Had to dust off the cobwebs. Um, and I'm talking literal cobwebs. There was an actual cobweb on my camera when I sat down to record this video. Uh, but we're back, that won't happen again. And uh, today's video is going to be talking a little bit about the, the upcoming season and some of the players who I think are sort of ready to take the next step uh, in 2023 now obviously the concept is a little bit arbitrary there's going to be heaps of players who are on the verge of breaking out so to speak but i've decided to isolate 10 players that i'm particularly intrigued to see how they go in 2023 i guess the rough criteria i was going off would be young players who i think will markedly improve and if they do so i think it would be very helpful to their team's success going forward in 2023 i'm not including draftees obviously we saw nick dacos last year um, smash it and have a huge impact on his team success but I did include draftees in this video I'm talking about players who have been around the system for a little while now and I think will take a big jump in terms of production you know in previous editions of this I'm, I'm bloody sick of putting Cam Rayner and Zach Butters in my videos and they've had injury woes etc and stuff but this is the year I'm not going to do it which means that this will be the year that they break out and uh, smash it for their respective teams but I'll say it again guys it's good to be back I'm um, looking forward to going through the 2023 season with you um, as an Eagles fan I'm, I'm pretty excited believe it or not um, I think there's a lot of reason to be optimistic I'll probably make some Eagles videos or one Eagles video before the season as well and I've got some ideas for some pre-season type content as well probably do a podcast soon um, so it'd be great to have you along for that before I get into the nuts and bolts of this video, guys, uh, I do want to shout out a sort of new partnership I've got with the channel, um, and I'm talking about Drewsy's Athlete Academy. So for those of you who are or aren't aware, I guess, um, my good friend Drewsy, who's been a big part of this channel over the last couple of years, has launched his own online fitness and coaching strength and conditioning business. Drewsy has gone and gotten himself qualified as a, um, as a sports scientist now, and he's got some genuine industry experience working as a sports and conditioning coach. He's done some work with the Perth Demons Football Club as well in their Futures program and uh, also some work with the you know the young talent at the West Australian Football Commission as well so he's developed quite a good resume and on top of that he's quite passionate about turning young men into either athletes or just better people through discipline and fitness which is something I think is a great cause and uh, something that I've sort of been delving into with the content I've been watching lately and the importance of uh, building yourself up both mentally and physically as well. So I do implore you to go check out the business that he's just launched. I'll leave all the links and stuff in the description this video. There is some specific work for prospective AFL athletes. So that is kind of his niche. He will develop you if you want to build your fitness up in terms of, you know, if you're a young guy playing footy and you want to take your game to the next level and you need someone to coach you on that, he is able to do that for you. But it's not just for athletes, it's for the general person as well. There's a gym beginners program. There's also a uh, muscle bulking program as well, which would be very, very helpful. And don't forget, I know you can read a lot of stuff online, but it's not quite the same as having a fully qualified sports scientist giving you the coaching as well. I think the, the premise behind this, what he's doing here is, is really, really valuable to people. And you don't have to be an athlete to, to get stuck into your fitness. I think it's uh, something, I think even just the concept of, you know, building that discipline, rising to challenges and succeeding them is so good for um, for your confidence and, and to be honest, your mental health as well. So I think Druzy has a lot to offer people in that space uh, in terms of mindset and building discipline as well. So the reason I'm mentioning all that is that uh, through TrueFooty, you can get 20% off his programs as well. So you can use the code TrueFooty20 when you go to his website website at checkout and you get 20% off on uh, on any program that you decide to buy. So go check it out guys. I'll leave all the information for it in the description of this video. So enough waffle, football pun. Uh, let's talk about 10 players that I think will take their game to the next level. In 2023, I'm going to start with Gold Coast Elijah Hollands. Obviously, he was a former hard draft pick that sustained, I think they drafted him off an ACL actually. So it took him a while to uh, sort of 
get into the groove at AFL level. He played five games uh, this year, or 2022 rather, he played five games, and uh, obviously it's a much more competitive Gold Coast side to get into, um, and a, you know, competitive in, with other teams as well. But in the five games he played, I thought he showed some really good signs that he is going to be a very capable AFL player. In, in those five games, he averaged 17 touches and a goal a game, which is a pretty good output for that sort of rangy, sort of half forward type who can run through the midfield and the wing. Um, and I think that type of dynamic forward half player is exactly what Gold Coast need. Um, but in general, that is a, a pretty dangerous position to be good at as well. He got a Rising Star nomination in round 23. He had two goals and 23 possessions against Hawthorne. And uh, I think we're seeing some genuine talent there. And if he gets some continuity this year, I think he could be a really different dynamic in that Gold Coast side. And that's why I think he could be a big player for them in 2023. The next player I'll nominate is a player I really like at Hawthorne, and that is Will Day, who played 17 games in 2022 and uh, kind of moved around a little bit. I think that might be to sort of fast track his development a little bit, but I think where he will settle is probably in the back six as that sort of roaming halfback flanker with rebound. He could potentially push up onto a wing as well. So he's got that versatility. And I think with all the experience leaving Hawthorne, um, the emphasis on these next batch of young late leaders and the next nucleus, so to speak, uh, it's going to be even greater. So I think he's going to get every opportunity to stand up. And I think he will stand up because he's a tremendously important player for them going forward. I love the way he plays. And I think the way he plays as well doesn't necessarily rely on team success. I think he can still shine in the back half, um, even if Hawthorne are uh, going to plummet, which <laughs> many people are expecting based on their off season. I do think it's likely to be a rebuilding year for the Hawks. But that being said, if he has a great year um, amongst other players there, I think that will be considered a huge success for Hawthorne. Third on the list, um, I th I'm denied a little bit about putting Nate, Nick Dacos into this list, but I think regardless, he's still going to be a player to watch. Uh, obviously, had an amazing first season, averaged 26 possessions, played 25 games, which off the top of my head, that would be every game for Collingwood this year. And he kicked seven goals as well from a halfback flank and some pretty good clutch goals as well. So I don't really need to sell you on who Nick Dacos is and what he adds. He's got certainly uh, a superstar factor about him, superstar potential, and genuinely a chance for all Australian this year. So it'd be interesting to see for me where he plays his football. I think it's probably still a little early for him to be pushed into the midfield too much. But I think if he has another good year like that, I think his form will genuinely impact where Collingwood finishes. And that's a huge praise for a guy that's probably 20 this year. Either way, absolutely a player to watch when he's come off that. If he can do that in his first season, and you know, maybe he averages 30 a game in 2023, that will be absolutely massive. Next up, we'll talk about Jamara Ugelhagen from the Western Bulldogs. Of course, he is a former number one draft pick, and he started to hit his straps last year as well. It was a bit of a quiet debut season in 2021. Uh, he'd only played the five games that year, but this year it turned it around with 17 games and kicked over a goal a game with 18 for the year, which is a pretty good return for a young key position player. I think Lob coming into the side, you could look at it two ways. It'll either make it harder for him to get a game but I think it would also help him structurally as well, having another tall presence. I think there's still a very, very good chance that Jamara plays as much footy as he earns this year. Um, either way, I think he's an immense talent and with an extra year of development, an extra preseason, the built confidence from playing 17 games last year, I think we could see him take his game to the next level, absolutely. And the dogs are still, you know, in theory, uh, a side competing for the flag. I think he's talented enough to impact a premiership tilt uh, sooner rather than later. And we saw that with five goals against Melbourne last year with the sealer just about on the siren as well. I don't really need to sell you on his talent either. He's a tremendously gifted player and uh, this could be the year we start to see real signs of him becoming an elite player. Number five on the list, I have got Essendon's Archie Perkins, who is of course a former top 10 pick, like pick seven or eight, a couple of years ago. And uh, he's played 39 games now, and that has gone very, very quickly. Like Hollands, uh, he's a high impact sort of forward midfielder, um, who despite being physically developed, I think is one of those players that will need a bit of time for his strengths as a junior to become strengths at AFL level because he's that physical, high impact sort of player. But he's played 39 games now. He's just had his third preseason or in the midst of it right now. And uh, I think given where Essendon are at, obviously in the bottom half of the ladder, he's going to be given every opportunity to thrive in that side as well. He won't necessarily be on the bench or not getting games. I think 
he's at the stage now where he's going to pass 50 games this year. This could be the year we see a big jump from Archie Perkins, and that will be critical for Essendon, not just so much this year, but, you know, going forward with this potential premiership sort of rebuild. Next up, I've included Jason Horn Francis on the list, and how could you not? He was one of the most high-profile trades of last offseason. Obviously, he's the former number one draft pick for North Melbourne, who, after a single year, cracked the shits and requested a trade to the Port Adelaide Footy Club. It was a solid first year in terms of output. He played 17 games, had 17 disposals a game, and uh, for like a physical sort of midfielder forward that he is, again, it was probably unrealistic to expect him to set the world on fire. I know he, he played well at senior level as a teenager, but at AFL level, it's another big jump again. So I think it was always going to take him time to adjust, but I think... He's obviously proven that he can make those jumps quickly, so I wouldn't be surprised that if in a better mindset, better, better state of mind, higher morale, and frankly, in a much better team, I think we could see another big jump in output from Horn Francis this season as well. And we know the talent he has, it's just a matter of time. We'll go with another former high draft pick uh, who has requested a trade to Adelaide. We'll go with Isaac Rankin this time. He was picked two back in 2018. And in 2022, I'd say we saw a pretty big jump in output from Rankin at the Gold Coast Suns, who will, of course, be playing for the Crows this year in new colors. I think, I think he's probably starting to enter the prime of his career now as that sort of small forward uh, who can roll through the midfield as well. 29 goals from 18 games last year is a very good return. That actually doubled his previous year's output, so it was genuinely a big jump in production. We saw multiple bags of four. I think we saw three or four bags of three as well, so his ability to get off the chain and really impact games is there already. And of course, he's like 22, 23, so it's time, but... I think this could be the year where we see him genuinely elevated to being one of the better small forwards in the competition. I think a lot will hinge on how Adelaide go. I'm optimistic on Adelaide, to be honest. I think what they're building is very, very solid, and we've got a pretty exciting duo there with Rochelle and Rankin in the same forward line. I think Rankin could have a very big year, and if he does, it will give Adelaide that different dynamic edge, and maybe they nudge pretty close to the eight. Now, it wouldn't be a true footy video if I didn't somehow shoehorn a West Coast Eagle into the video, but I'm going to nominate Jai Cully because I think this guy could be a bit of a hidden gem, and of course I'm saying that with blue and gold glasses on, but obviously he was the number one draft pick in the mid-season draft last year, um, one of those ones where it was surprising based on what he was producing last year uh, at junior level as to how he got overlooked, but I think the way he's approached that disappointment, I guess, of not getting drafted has been first class, hence why he was unanimously pretty much number one pick in the mid season draft we know he's a big bodied mid he's six foot four he's got great skills he can take a mark but one thing that shocked me is this guy is actually an athletic beast he came third in the eagles time trial and i think he factored that in his obvious talent in with the fact that the eagles are going through a transition period jai cully is going to get games and i think he's locked himself in for round one now don't get me wrong jai cully versus the other names on the list I'm not saying he's as talented as them, but I do think he's an important player for West Coast this year. will be given every opportunity to succeed, has the talent, and I think a realistic chance for him this year is he will become an entrenched best 22 midfielder. And God, the Eagles need something like that. Certainly not making calls that he's going to be as good as Horn Francis or Jamara Uglehagen, Nick Dacos. He doesn't really compare to those players, but a young player who I think will take his knee into the next level and be important for his team, that's Jai Cully. Thank you. I just needed to get that Eagles bias out. <laughs> Next, I want to talk about Logan McDonald. Uh, obviously, I, I think my opinion is he is one of the best key forward prospects in the league. And in my view, again, a nuffy eagle. Uh, could be like the next Josh Kennedy. I think his talent level is not far off that. He played 17 games last year, so saw plenty of it and kicked 17 goals. So similar output to Ugal Hagen. He'll turn 21 this year and, you know, traditionally key forwards need that time, but he's been given a fairly good look at it so far. Some decent opportunity in there. Buddy Franklin has signed a contract that will likely take him to the end of his career at the end of this year. And so Sydney don't really have any real reason for Logan McDonald to sit in the reserves for at any point this year unless he's really stinking it up so my logic being he's going to get plenty of opportunity he's getting more physically developed i think he's a prodigious talent i think logan mcdonald could seriously see a big jump in output this year i'm not saying coleman medalist contender i'm saying from 17 goals in 17 games he could play every game this year and potentially bag 35 to 40. I think his talent does not preclude him from that. And I think his talent can absolutely take him there this year. And if he does, that is a huge string in the bow of a side that is likely to compete for a premiership again. The final player on the list I'd like to nominate might be a bit of a surprising one, but I think we could see some interesting form from Jai Amos this year at Fremantle. Another one where it's probably a little bit early for him to hit his potential. We're certainly not talking about him breaking out and becoming, you know, the next competition star. 
but when you consider the fact that the Dockers haven't quite answered the key forward question, you've got Tabiner down there, but they have just lost Lob. I think you're going to see some opportunity for Jai Amos. And the thing that is obvious with Jai Amos to me is that he doesn't need to necessarily fill out and be the fully formed developed product for him to impact at AFL level. I think his attributes will lend himself to being able to impact at AFL as early as next year. Two things mainly, he is a prodigious kick on goal, like really, really accurate, takes his opportunities, which is an underrated skill for a forward. Uh, and the fact that he doesn't rely on his contested game, he's really, really good at getting separation and uh, beating players on the lead. I think he's going to be a difficult matchup and uh, I think he's going to get plenty of opportunities this year at Fremantle. So again, we're probably looking at a 25 goal season, but if he pulls that off, that is a massive plus for Fremantle. And that's why he fits the criteria of this video. He's a player that will take his game to the next level and it will have a genuine impact on his side. So that's it guys. That is 10 players I nominate who will take their game to the next level. Again, very, very arbitrary. Okay. So you'll, there's probably about 50 players I didn't mention, but that is the 10 players that came to mind for me. As always, I welcome your suggestions in the comments below, what you agree with, what you disagree with. There's plenty of players I missed out on. I might have just forgotten someone obvious. So please let me know in the comments and we'll get a bit of a discussion going. But thanks guys, that is the end of the first video back uh, of the preseason. So apologies if that was a bit rusty, um, but looking forward to making some more content going forward. Do go check out Drew's his Athlete Academy. I think it's a great business and uh, really adding value for some people out there as well. So even if it's not for you, maybe recommend it to a friend. Thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video and it's good to be back. Cheers.